A few months ago, I picked up these two Chanel flap bags, the reissue 227 and the reissue clutch. And we are long overdue for a battle between these bags. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. So I have here my dream bag, my my ultimate unicorn holy grail handbag as they say. The Chanel reissue in the 227 size in this beautiful bronze metallic leather. And this is a piece of protective felt in there. There's the bottom of the bag, the top of the bag. And I thought that that would be the only reissue I ever got. But then a few months later, I came upon this gorgeous, spectacular piece. It was an incredible deal that I just could not pass up. And this is the lesser known Chanel reissue clutch and this is in the 226 size. So I thought we might compare these two handbags. We'll do some basic dimension comparisons, but also some of the features. There are certainly similarities, but there are certainly differences as well. We'll do a little bit of a wet fits, some mod shots, and maybe that will give you a better idea of what you might be looking for if you're looking for a Chanel bag. I know when I was looking for my reissue 227, the comparison videos were invaluable to me, being able to see that bag compared to different sizes or the features compared to other kinds of Chanel bags. So I'm hoping this will be helpful to you guys and I know that this bag in particular is not one that there are many videos on. So I'm going to provide that service for you. You're welcome. Let's start with dimensions. The reissue 227 is 12 inches across or 30 centimeters. It is approximately 8 inches high and I say approximately because the top and bottom can squish and give a little bit and the base is about three and a half inches deep. The reissue clutch 226 is 10 and a half inches long. That comes out to about 26 or 27 centimeters. It bows out a little bit on the corners, so let's say about 26. It's about six and a half or seven inches tall, and it's about one and three quarters inches deep. Now that that boring stuff is out of the way, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. There's the front of the bags, so you can see obviously the reissue clutch is a little bit smaller. If I put the clutch in front, you can see they're about the same height, but the 227 is longer. Here are the sides. One thing you'll notice about the sides of the bag is the clutch. Maybe I should hold them up one at a time and I'll start with the reissue. The reissue looks triangular in shape, whereas the clutch looks rectangular. That's important. We'll get back to that later. And of course it has to do with capacity. Here are the backs of the bags. Both have that so-called Mona Lisa pocket. The other side, bottoms of the bag. This is where I always say, that's where I feel like you can get the best idea of the differences and the size of a bag. You can see how much shorter the clutch is versus the reissue 227 and how much wider the bases are. That gives you a better idea of capacity. Too. And then the tops of the bags. So we saw that big difference in the shapes of the sides. The fronts are set up the same way. They both have the flap with that half moon and the mademoiselle clasp. And both of these happen to have ruthenium hardware. Is that true? This one, I don't know if that's ruthenium or if it's more of a nickel. It's not so aged looking. It's more of an even tone or an even patina. The other notable difference on these bags is the top, the straps. The traditional reissue has two grommets here and two to here with the chain strap, which can be worn doubled like this, or you can pull it down and have one longer strap. There is no such thing on the clutch, hence it being a clutch, eh? However, when you open this bag up, there's a surprise inside. You'll see that there's a little D-ring here and a little D-ring here, and attached to those two D-rings is this strap. A very different chain indeed from the traditional reissue. This is a substantial chain. It's also comfortable to wear, even though it looks like it would be quite bumpy and uncomfortable. This is a very thin, I forget what this chain is called. It's like a snake, like a vertebrae. What is that called? Somebody help me out. And it's made to be able to tuck inside the bag so you can use the bag just as a clutch. Or if you need the convenience of having the shoulder strap, you've got it there. This strap is not removable. I suppose you could remove it yourself and add some little clips, which I have thought about doing, but I don't want to 
damage the bag and that's something that would drop the resale value not that I plan to sell this but it is just attached with a little metal hook there a little circle not a hook so it would be possible to clip that put an actual hook or clasp on it and then move that back into place and even have it soldered back into place if you're okay with somebody doing that on your Chanel bag I have carried the bag with this strap in fact I never use it as a clutch I only use it with the strap I've carried it several times I've had some weight in the bag it looks like it might dig into your shoulder because it's so thin but I have not had that problem at all it is quite comfortable the bag itself is very lightweight much less so than the reissue 226 which does have some weight to it both bags are full leather inside and out every pocket is lined with leather every piece of the interior that's visible when you open the bag is lined with leather this has more leather in it though because it has more pockets and compartments so first let's take a look at the bag that has the simpler layout, the clutch. When you look in there, it's just one big open compartment. And you can see, since that side is rectangular, it allows you to open the bag quite a bit and fit quite a bit in. We'll look at that in a minute. With it being rectangular, you're still able to close it. The flap is big enough that it will close. It doesn't have to be pinched at the top to be able to clasp it. There are two pockets on this bag. One is a flat slip pocket here. That's quite a good size. And the other is this zipped pocket right behind it which is even a bit bigger than the slip pocket actually no I'm wrong the slip pocket is slightly bigger than the zipped pocket and I'm wrong again because the interior of the zipped pocket is lined in fabric not leather but the slip pocket is all leather notice also that on the interior flap of this bag there is nothing but leather no other features whereas on the interior of the traditional reissue you have this zipped pocket here known as the love letter pocket it's kind of upside down if you're not familiar with this the pocket is up there so when the flap is closed it's more like a normal pocket would be where the zipper's on top and stuff falls down here your stuff's gonna fall out perhaps maybe don't put stuff in there that you can't have falling out there are three compartments in the interior of this bag one is this area behind the main compartment the other when you lift this second flap you have the cc's sewn into the leather and that's where you have the big main pocket this would be equivalent to the interior of that clutch bag but this is a little bigger because the bag is bigger here you have the two slip pockets and the one little lipstick pocket and then the third compartment is this pocket up front here and i know there are some people who don't like the double flap bags i love them i think one of the things i love most about this bag is the way it's set up on the interior that design with the three compartments and the pockets where they are for me it works perfectly and let me say too while I'm thinking about this on both of these bags I have found that when I'm wearing them I go to open the bag undo the clasp that's very easy to undo the clasp and get into the bag but on both of them when I go to put the flap back that's where the trouble starts and that's probably my only complaint about these bags because it's not something that I can easily do without looking at it I have to usually pick the bag up use two hands use my eyeballs to line up the rectangles to be able to fit and then to turn it. The traditional reissue is a structured bag, but it's nowhere near as structured as the classic flap. The traditional reissue was made to squash and fold flat and fit in your suitcase or whatever you may need to do with it, but it still is structured. You can tell that there is something in the sides and something in the base that's hard and helps keep it in shape. Whereas on this clutch, it's all just smush. It feels like there's nothing in here giving it structure. It is just pieces of leather and thread. Now I don't know if that's actually what it is, but that's how it feels. Now let's see what fits. I think what I'll do is see what we can stuff into the smaller bag and then put that stuff into the larger bag and see how much room we have left. iPhone 10. Does it fit in the back pocket? It easily does. Would I keep it back there? I might. Right now, with the bag being empty, it doesn't stretch the pocket at all. Once we get stuff in it, let's try that again and see what we think at that point. The bag I'm carrying today is a similar size to these two. This is the Rebecca Minkoff Edie bag, the larger size shoulder bag, although this one is actually crossbody, and this is in the nylon. Quick size comparison with both bags to give you an idea. I do not have the Edie stuffed, I just have the things I happened to be carrying, which I'm now going to dump out all over my table here so we can do this experiment. Inside the clutch, I'm going to place my Louis Vuitton Agenda PM, which stands up and is just the right height to fit into this bag. Louis Vuitton Mini Pochette. Those are about the same height, so I'm just gonna stand that up next to the agenda. Card holder with my medical cards. I'm gonna slip that into the slip pocket. My Tory Burch card holder or key holder or bag charm. It's a versatile piece from Yota Style. And my brand new to me, 
Louis Vuitton zippy coin purse in the Blossoms print, which I have not yet revealed on my channel, so you are getting very sleepy and you will forget that you saw that. But don't get sleepy enough to turn the video off. My Louis Vuitton sunglasses holder in the PM size, and that just about fills the bag up. There's still a little bit of space for a few small things. Can we close it? Oh dear, that might be a little bit difficult. Well, we have to finagle it a little bit, but we can close it. Now, one thing to notice that will happen on these bags, especially if you overstuff them, and I seem to have this a bit overstuffed, is that these corners, because they're not secured down, can come out on you like this. So if you don't want that to happen, don't overstuff your bag. I'm gonna take my sunglasses out, and that didn't make much of a difference. I mean, it really doesn't feel like it's all that overstuffed. It's only when you go to close it, and it's still, it's not straining. Like, I don't have to pull really hard. That works fine. It's not heavy. You could carry it as a clutch. You could use the strap, which I'll show you in a minute, but that gives you an idea of what fits. Let me show you one other thing that I'm curious whether it fits or not. And that's a Louis Vuitton toiletry 19. I feel like it's going to fit. If you're somebody who carries that piece around, it does. It fits in this bag just like that, and there's still room for a few other things, and it closes easily. Now, I just put the other stuff back in because I said I wanted to see if the phone would fit in the back pocket and if I'd feel comfortable wearing it like that, and I feel like I would. Maybe not all the time, but that's doable. And maybe if I was carrying a little less inside, I could keep that phone in the slip pocket. It would easily fit. Now let's put things in the larger reissue 227 and see how much space we have left. First, let's see how the toiletry 19 looks in here. Plenty of space for that. Could we stand it up? We could not stand it up. It sticks out just a little bit. You can see it there. Now here's everything that I just had in the clutch, and you can see there's still quite a bit of room over there. And I also haven't put anything in the back compartment or the front compartment yet. And I had my mini pochette standing up in the clutch, but there's enough room in here for me to have it laying down as it's supposed to be. So that's how I would actually put things in this bag, laying down, not all standing on end. And that leaves me plenty of room to put my sunglasses right on top. I could even stuff a scarf in there probably. What I like to do with this bag instead of carrying a wallet is use my card holder, which is from a Felici bag from Louis Vuitton, and it has the slip pocket here too, nothing on the back. And I just slide that in the front pocket, and that keeps my money there, and then all the other stuff I want to carry there. And then I usually put my phone in this back pocket. Now I know that there's at least one YouTuber who has said to never put anything in that pocket back there, that it's not technically a pocket. However, I don't think it hurts the bag in the slightest to put your phone there, and it's a very easy place to go to get your phone. You don't have to open up any of the front compartments and expose any of that. It's easy to find your phone there. It's separate from everything else. And on this bag, I am not comfortable keeping my phone in the back pocket. You could do it with the iPhone 10. It fits in there, but this bag was so expensive. And really the other one was too, even though I got a great deal on it. I just don't want to risk stretching out that back pocket. Now with the same things in this bag that I just had in the clutch, this bag is significantly heavier because it started out significantly heavier heavier. Let me give you a couple mod shots so you can see how the bag looks. So here we are with the one chain here. This is the only look you're going to get if you're using the chain. It's not long enough to be crossbody, and this is the length on the shoulder. This bag you have two options. You have the doubled strap which sits just like this. I carry it that way a lot. I also carry it with one strap like that and this is long enough to cross body, which is amazing. And then this is how this bag would look as a clutch. Stick it under the arm, hold a glass of wine and a plate, hold it in the hand like this. Would not carry it like that, especially with stuff in it. Don't want to dent those precious quilts. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.